Let's learn something from Dan Skelly. Let's Dan, fantastic year. Notoriously bearish through much of 2022. It's worked out almost perfectly. We're all wondering now for you, what are the preconditions that you want to see? The checkbox, check, 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 to add equity exposure. Sure, and good morning. And by the way, it's great to be uh, in studio all together, having the band here back together. So I'm it's sick as a dog, but continue. It's been two all years, right. Dan. It's been too I'll, long. I'll, I'll inch my chair. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone else is too. John, to your, to your question, you know, look, we've done a lot of damage, obviously, in the third quarter and last month. But notably, we're, we're still trading around the June lows. But notably, all of that work has been rates, right? We haven't seen the earnings reflected yet. And so talking about Fed's speak. I think investors want to hear management speak, really, at this point, and, and really kind of throw in more of a towel. So number one is earnings. Number two is PMIs. We haven't seen that contraction yet. Uh, and number three is jobs. And we have a big update coming uh, this week. Uh, but we just haven't seen that rise in the unemployment just yet. I've been waiting, waiting, waiting for a research note like you've got, which is real simple. Look at dividend growers. How did dividend growth change? How does dividend growth change given dampened economy, dampened Dampened revenue growth, and then down the income statement, how does that filter into the dividend growth decision? Uh, well, when you look at companies, uh, M&A and, and deals have been really dried up this year. So I think you, you look at companies being more defensive. Uh, buybacks has obviously been a huge use of capital this year, and dividends continues to be a huge use of capital, and, and uh, investors are rewarding dividend growth wildly this year. How many basis points pickup do you have there with dividend growth versus the riffraff that's out there? I mean, I mean, when you look at kind of income styles, dividend growth styles, they're down kind of mid single digit, high single digit this year versus the S&P down 20 percent plus. So, Dan, Tom said something earlier at the start of the show that our bonds going to and John asked him, our bonds going to react the way that they normally do in a downturn where they gain value. People pile in. Tom was saying he doesn't think so. A lot of people agree with him. Do you? Uh, inflation is still stubbornly high. And so if we have kind of a plateauing or a moderation in inflation, I think bonds can certainly act better. But Lisa, to your point, that was the case earlier this year. The first four and a half months of this year was all about stagflation. And so you saw both stocks and bonds down together. It got a little bit better over the summer than, as you've seen, again, bonds have sold off quite rapidly. So I think around the 4 percent level on the 10-year, there is more value in bonds here to do their job uh, in, a, in a volatile environment. I spoke to Mike Wilson, your colleague, our good friend, in the last couple sure. of weeks, and I asked him whether you guys start to get uncomfortable when everyone starts to share your view. When you start to see some of the big bulls on Wall Street capitulate, and Marko Klanovich came about that close on Friday, do you feel uncomfortable when everyone starts getting comfortable with your way of thinking? You do, but your thesis is still in check, right? So when you think about the call Mike made, and we joked a few months ago about that lonely island in, in sure. January. Sure, everyone's on board. It's overflowing. You know, what, to your point, Jonathan, you look at the sell side, you look at the buy side, mutual fund cash levels, hedge fund net exposures, and we have a particular vantage because Morgan Stanley is the biggest prime broker out there. So everyone is inching, what is this, inching. sales call for you? <laughs> We're here in studio. Why, why not? <laughs> You okay, can start sure whipping out sure. a PowerPoint. Continue. No, but to, to Jonathan's point, we are growing a little bit more nervous about that consensus trade, but that doesn't think that doesn't mean things can't go lower still.